next up, we have another friend. I, I'm just bringing on my friends here. <laughs> this is Robert Rowley from Patchstack. Patchstack is a security firm in the WordPress space. Um, Robert and I kind of had some parallel careers looking at security. He's, Patchstack just had this amazing report come out about the state of WordPress security that I found to be just one of the best looks at really where we're at. They took a deep dive into what's happening with WordPress security. You know, when I got into really working with WordPress and WordPress security, there were a lot of concerns and there were a lot of hacked sites. We're in a different world now. And a lot of that is attributable to the community of security researchers. And we're going to ask Robert about that as well. So stick around. We're going to start in just a minute. I'll bring Robert on um, and we will have questions afterwards. So if you have questions about security, anything ha having to do with security for Robert, um, please pop those into the chat. You don't have to hold them to the end of the presentation. I will, I have a little system of starring things so that I can make sure that those get answered at the end. And uh, look at that. We aren't even going to take a break. We're just going to dive right into this because we are at the top of the hour. So Patch Stack, they have been around for a while. They had a, a name and a rebrand a few years ago. Um, I think it was Web Arcs before that, but they are seasoned security prof professionals. Um, Robert Rowley has been around the WordPress scene and the WordPress security scene for a very long time and the security scene. I mean, we've had conversations about how we've both been at DEF CON, which is a security event that happens year after year. Um, and he is Patch Stack's security advocate. He hails from Colorado. And he spends his days helping show developers and users of open source, like WordPress, uh, the, that security can be easy, which is a topic close to my heart. So I'm going to bring Robert on and uh, we'll, we'll get started. Robert, how are Hello. you? Hello, I'm good. And how are you? <laughs> I'm doing really well. I love your like your background. It's like, yeah. I almost feel like I'm in the matrix a little bit with you here. <laughs> yeah, that works. It's a good one. I'll help you escape it if you need. Okay, great. Awesome. All right. We've had conversations in the past, and I'm really grateful that you're here with the Cadence community to share your expertise and to share your knowledge. I'm really interested in diving deeper on this report that you have um, that you have. If you have a screen share or anything, there's a yep. present button down below and mm -hmm. you can select whatever right. window you want, and then I'll, I'll help you get it back up on the screen. Um, but yeah, this report was really powerful and it was so great to see so many news outlets in the WordPress space really hone in on on what a unique report it was. You know, a lot of security companies do their roundup of like, okay, this is how many vulnerabilities we've had and this is the state of WordPress. But you guys went a lot deeper. Mm -hmm. Most of yeah, it was super fun going super deep into some of these topics. And today I'll share with everybody a lot of the details and, you know, uh, numbers and stuff first, but then really get into more deeper topics and broad, more broader things and doing some predictions based on the data that we've been seeing, not only this year, but the last three years to look forward to what we can, what we can expect regarding WordPress security in 2023 too. Amazing. Well, I'm going to show myself out and give you the floor. And when you're done, I will pop back in and we'll get to some of the questions from our audience. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Awesome. Right. Get started. Thank you all for being here for starts. Um, again, I already got introduced, so let's just get to the slides. <laughs> First, obviously, I'm going to have to start with a table of contents, what you can expect in this talk. I'm going to introduce Patch Stack for those of you who don't know what Patch Stack is. And but once you know what Patch Stack is, you'll be able to see how we got this information to show you some security bug trends from 2022, as well as a few years prior. I'm going to break down those trends so you have a better understanding of what you know these security issues mean, because I don't want to use security to scare you. I want to use security to inform you. Then once you're well informed, we're going to go into some hot topics, what I call them. These are the topics of security issues that I don't feel are really being talked about in the ecosystem very much. You may have heard of some concerns about open source security supply chain. So I'll introduce you what that really means in the WordPress ecosystem and what you need to do about it. Finally, I'm going to look ahead using the information we learned today to kind of make some predictions about what we can see in this year, 2023. So Foremost, I work for Patch Stack. Uh, I'm their security advocate. But who is secure, who is a Patch Stack? Patch Stack is a CNA. 
this stands for Certified Numbering Authority. It means that we are authorized by a government organization called MITRE, M-I-T-R-E, to review and validate security bugs, in, uh, specifically in the WordPress ecosystem. All right, we had to go through a process to get this done, to get formalized. We also use this CNA status to run a bug bounty program. You may have heard of bug bounty programs. I think Past Tech was one of the first ones to offer bug bounties for every secure, uh, every WordPress component. That's any random theme. You've got 10 installs, we'll cover you. You've got 100 installs, we'll cover you. Themes and plugins, and not just the repository, but also third-party marketplaces like Invanto, Code Canyon, and such. So we use this, this uh, program, this bug bounty program, to incentivize security researchers to look for bugs in these open source projects. We then take the information that the security researchers provide us, and we carefully and professionally manage that information to share it with the developers of those projects so that the developers can write the patch, therefore securing the code. This is a bit of a unique approach and not the same as what you may be familiar with with other security vendors. The other vendors are kind of focused on a post-compromise site cleanup, and that has its place, but that business model thrives in a world full of hacked websites. PatchStack's business model is a little bit different. It thrives in a world of securing open source projects. In turn, this secures the websites that use those projects so they never get compromised in the first place. So let's go forward and share some information about what we've learned in the last three years. This chart, I'm gonna start with, start with the scariest one. It may certainly sound scary. This is the number of security bugs reported in the WordPress ecosystem each year. You can see 2020, to 2021, it kind of more than doubled. In fact, that was 150 plus percent increase. But 2021 to 2022, tripled. More security bugs were reported. And this is where I want you to take a stop, take a breath. I need a breath. Remember that these are security bugs that were patched. These are not active security vulnerabilities. These are this is a signature. This is a you know evidence of security bugs being patched, which means the vulnerabilities no longer exist. 2022 removed the most security vulnerabilities from the WordPress ecosystem than any prior year. And why was this? Well, because there was more bug bounties being ex uh, reported to CNAs like PatchStack. There are also two other major CNAs, uh, WP Scan and WordFence, both have uh, gotten the same accreditation, but PatchStack received over a thousand reports. And this has led to an increase in total bug security bugs reported in the ecosystem. We can also see a similar trend happening a few years ago when WordPress Core first added their Hacker One bug bounty program. The, the, I think that was in 2016, 2017. But in that year, they had the most security bugs reported in the project. In the years that followed, that number started trending down. And this is because somebody was finally incentivizing somebody to look for the security bugs so that the developers could write the patches. Uh, this is a, a, a sign of cooperation cooperation between researchers and developers. And this is really how I feel open source becomes secure, is when cooperation happens between the researchers and the developers. Let's break down that chart just for 2022. This was the total bug breakdown by software type, differentiated between plugins, themes, and core. You can really much see, and this is obvious, I think, for most people that have looked at to, uh, security bugs in WordPress ecosystem, plugins account for the majority. This isn't a knock on uh, this is not a knock on the security of the plugins code base. It's a simple fact of the matter. There are far more plugins than there are, you know, themes in core. The simple, like if you were to count the number of lines of code, right? It's astronomically more. And this is why plugins certainly lead the way in security concerns uh, when you break it down by component. But again, I said I'm not here to scare you with these security topics because most of these bugs weren't critical, right? They weren't related or resulting in sites being compromised. They were getting patched. And if we look at the severity of the bug, the majority, 84% were considered a medium severity risk. Let me explain what a medium severity risk means for, for the average person. It means that that vulnerability probably couldn't get easily weaponized against a website. It probably required um, an attacker to trick a user to following a link or have a valid login in the first place, right? So maybe a compromised credential to then perform the attack against the website. So as long as you have good secure passwords, possibly 2FA or pass keys set up on your websites and you trust your users, medium severity vulnerabilities aren't a reason to be worried about the sky is falling. So the scary ones though, 
are way over there on the right. The critical severity, which represented just 2% of those 4,000 plus security bugs reported in 2022. The specific number for these is about 90 bugs were critical. And to be honest, most of them were affecting low install count plugins. You probably don't have them on your websites, but it's important that you know somehow if you do. I'll get into how you can do that later, but let's break down a little bit more instead of just severity for each bug. Let's break down by bug type. For security research geeks like me, uh, I can understand this chart really well. Cross-site request forgery became, was the number one reported security bug in the WordPress ecosystem in 2022. I don't think many people know what cross-site request forgery is. It's kind of what I mentioned in that medium severity, and really this is a low to medium severity risk. Cross-site request forgery attacks happen when an attacker convinces a currently logged in user to follow a link or you know, perform an action on their website. It simply is a way of defensively, de um, there's, there's a lack of a defensive coding mechanism called a nonce in the WordPress field or in the WordPress ecosystem that, pre that, prevented the, uh, that can prevent the cross-site request forgery from existing. So when there lacks a nonce in an action such as an AJAX or an API request, cross-site request forgery could be there. But in reality, like as for your website, if you're vulnerable to cross-site request forgery, it also, requ it also requires an attacker to convince you to follow links like malicious links or phishing links that will then perform an attack against your website. So it's really, like I said, low to medium severity risk, but it still accounts for 29.4% of the reported security bugs in WordPress last year. Second up, and this used to be the king, was cross-site scripting. That's a more serious risk. Cross-site scripting, depending on the conditions required to perform the attack, e.g. like authentication, or if it's stored or reflected cross-site scripting. Sorry, I can't get into the detailed, but sometimes cross-site scripting can be pretty bad. Cross-site scripting bugs plus CSRF bugs together, if they both exist together, can be a really, really bad time. But again, this is why it's best to just simply patch the bugs. And we were seeing in 2022, a lot of security developers, or sorry, a lot of developers, WordPress plugin developers, are picking up this torch of being a security developer and writing the patches for those bugs. If we go down this list to the bottom, it's arbitrary file upload. I think that's the most dangerous one in this list here. Uh, and it only accounted for 1.9% of the total bugs reported in WordPress. And again, this does not account for if they needed authentication or not to upload a file. An unauthenticated file upload bug would be, that would be, I think, thinking back, like a rev slider-esque like level of, of criticality, like it's super critical, super dangerous, but we didn't see any of those last year in the WordPress ecosystem, at least not in a large install count plugin. So that's basically my breakdown of all the various bug types. Let's go into some hot topics where I will talk about the open source supply chain. Your WordPress website has a supply chain. You rely on the developers of WordPress. Like that's number one link in your supply chain. We all, anybody running a WordPress website relies on those developers to provide security patches, updates, and you know information. Next up, you rely obviously on the developers of the plugins and themes that you choose to build your site with. So that could be two, three, or more supply chain links. And when every time you rely on somebody else for your website, that's how you build the image of what your supply chain looks like. And it gets a little bit more tricky because those projects themselves rely on more libraries to build their pro uh, you know their projects to make their their code work. A good example of this would be WordPress core uses Gutenberg, which is technically a separate project, and that creates a, a supply chain link that WordPress site users rely on WordPress core and Gutenberg. And if you look under the the uh, covers there a little bit further, Gutenberg relies on a bunch of JavaScript libraries, and WordPress Core itself relies on a bunch of other things like PHP in order to function. And that should really get you how the open source supply chain gets bigger and bigger the more deeper you look. But for your concerns, you should really just be focused on yeah the the direct single connections you have, and as long as those connections are uh, supplying patches and updates for their software code. I'll give you two examples from this ecosystem this last year. Starting with a, a plugin vendor, or actually a theme vendor called YITH, I think it's called Yith Themes. Uh, they had a single vulnerability. It was a low to medium uh, CSRF bug, right? I mentioned those before. The developers of Yith produced a patch very quickly, and they were able to deploy this patch downstream to all of their affected plugins because every plugin was using the same library that Yith developers had written. So this patch was easily made available downstream and very quick to update on all of the you know, reliant themes and plugins that were using the Yith framework. It has fewer links, 
e.g. developers in the chain. And this actually made it kind of um, easy to withstand, right? E a sturdy, strong supply chain because there was less developers involved in producing the patch and pushing the patch out to all the, the end user websites, or in this case, plugins. And then the end user websites needed to update the plugins. There's another case though. There's also Freemius. Good job, Rob. Yeah, Rob called it out in the chat. Freemius was my other example. Freemius is a popular SDK. Yep. As SDK stands for software development kit, basically. And a bunch, but they don't control the plugins that use their framework. They sell their framework to other develop to other plugin developers. And those plugin developers utilize the Freemius framework to you know, implement all the things they need, code the way they want to code. It's a good, it's a good model. But when Freemius had a, a security bug found in the framework itself in the library that they were distributing to their developers, that caused a monumental effort from the, both the Freemius team and the WordPress.org plugins repository team. There were hundreds of plugins that utilized Freemius and all hundreds of those needed to be informed to update the version of Freemius, the libraries that they were using in their projects. It caused a lot of effort and it was mostly a success. That's the good thing but not a perfect success. There were some projects that simply weren't responding to security notifications. The patch was there, they just needed to apply it, but they weren't. the developers weren't there to be found. In the end, those projects were removed from the WordPress.org repository. This was because there was a security concern that was being unaddressed. It's also a good strong signal that that plugin had been abandoned. Many of these plugins in the WordPress ecosystem simply are abandoned. And if an abandoned plugin can't receive a patch, it's not safe to use for end users' websites. So you need to make sure you remember to, if you run or manage a WordPress website, to know what your supply chain is, right? What plugins do you use? You can kind of worry about what libraries those plugins use, but your main concern is you need to know what plugins your sites are using and what themes your sites are using. And if, you, and if you're getting timely security patches made available when a security issue comes up. Also, it's a good important time to remember to consider those that you use for your open for your website as part of your supply chain, and you should probably find a way to support them. I know everybody loves open source because it's free, but the free and open source means freedom. <laughs> you should also pay in order to support those developers so that they can build better programs uh, and they can, you know, have a you know career or at least the ability to support you, their end users. So, on that, I got a little bit of a depressing topic. There were about 26% of those critical vulnerabilities I previously mentioned. Remember, there were 90 in total, so 26%, that's roughly I don't know, 20 or so. Um, they did not receive a, a patch for their security bug. Uh, and it was a critical security bug. We're talking unauthenticated, something bad to the website. These plugins simply were found out, found to be abandoned, right? The developers weren't there, were not available to provide the patch. So you know, the website owners that were using these plugins that were relying on them for their supply chain, unfortunately, have websites now that are insecure and at risk of compromise. Luckily, again, I'm not here to scare anyone. We're talking about most likely low install counts, right? If we're not talking to 1 million install count plugins, those plugins are probably well supported already. We're talking about those low install count plugins that aren't supported so well. They don't have a business model. They don't have, know how to monetize. And the developers simply moved on to do something else more valuable for their time. But this highlights the importance of choosing and supporting plugins and themes with your websites. Uh, this problem is also a little bit exasperated in this community because WordPress core doesn't tell you when you're running an unsupported plugin. They, they kind of don't know. The best they do is not mention that updates are or are not available in the WordPress admin panel in your plugins and themes. They just don't mention anything. And that leaves sites completely unaware that they may be running an insecure or unsupported component. If you use a security tool or vulnerability assessment tool, kind of like the PatchStack app, or use a tool that's powered by PatchStack Threat Intelligence, then you can easily identify components on your website in your supply chain that have known security bugs. This is the knowledge that can empower you, site owners, to take action to secure your sites before they get hacked. This is the dashboard of the picture of the PatchStack app. And I promise you, this is only a salesy slide, but I'm not selling you anything because this app is free. The plugin is free, you set up an account, and the basic functionality of informing you of which sites you have that are running insecure versions of components is provided free of charge. We obviously have a, 
a uh, you know it's a freemium model. We have extra features for extra pay, and we do do encourage you and and enjoy your support when you pay for a paid account. But this is the dashboard, and like I said, this is kind of like a security operations center. I've I've worked in Knox and Socks before. This is a security operations center, C S O C. It gives you a bird's eye view of the websites that you manage. This is really good for individual site owners, but really great for agencies if you manage multiple websites. You'll be able to spot if any of your websites have a known insecure component in them. And if I can even automate a lot of this with email, so you don't have to sit here watching this dashboard every day. And another thing I mentioned, the vulnerability intelligence. A lot of vendors use uh, patch text vulnerability intelligence. One of them was so kind to share us this quote, which we shared in our, our security report, was that by implementing our security intelligence and working with Patchak, they identified 56,000 websites, or sorry, vulnerabilities on their managed WordPress platform. 56,000, basically they, they were insecure and there was no visibility to this knowledge that they needed to apply a patch. The sites were at risk and it was only through the knowledge from the vulnerability intelligence that with this partner was able to help, you know, identify the risk in their in their platform for their managed WordPress sites and to allow their users to take action. There are a couple other ones that I should mention, like cPanel's WordPress toolkit and also iTheme security plugin, which now implements the patch text vulnerability intelligence. I hope in the future we will see more and more plugins and hosting providers and service providers mentioning that they work with patch tag because you can see that is a sign that they're working with somebody who's professional and confident about WordPress so you know fixing WordPress security. So this also brings me to back to the patch tag alliance. How do we get this intelligence? I kind of mentioned earlier we run this bug bounty program. We call it patch tag alliance. So let me ah oh, yeah there we go a little comment K from Cadence WP. You can bring that up if you would like, but um, there we go. We know the iThemes folks, yep. And they're very happy about the patch stack integration. And I hope iTheme users are happy about the patch stack integration because it's all about making those sites secure, at least for me. Uh, the patch stack alliance is how we build this intelligence. I mentioned it earlier, right? We take bug bounty reports, we work with the developers, we find those, those developers, you know, we help those developers write the patches. This makes things more secure. But now we need to tell the site owners, right? You need to update this version of the plugin because of this important security thing. This is how we use that intelligence. By paying all these bug bounties, we research, uh, sorry, by paying the security researchers, all these bug bounties, which in total was over $16,000 last year, we received a little over 1,000 reports and in turn gave all that report information to the open source projects for free. And we worked with them to write the patch for the bug. And this is provided again, no cost to them. All we ask is that they write, you know, write the patch for the bug. And because we can't simply, we can't force them to write the patch. But in at least like one case, I helped write the patch for that developer, but that was a special unique case. Uh, I was helping out somebody who's somebody who I felt I would care about. Uh, and we support the community, the WordPress ecosystem with this alliance. We have an in-house team that reviews all of these reports. Like I said, over a thousand reports last year, verifies them as true, right? Make sure that they're accurate so we're not wasting the developer's time because the developer doesn't need to hear about bogus bug bounty reports. And we triage these reports so they can be properly coordinated for disclosure publicly. This costs us a lot of time and resources. And let me show you how the breakdown of all that went. Here's a cool little chart. We start on the left side. We've got uh, 1,160 1, security bug reports is what PatchStack received in 2020, 2022. Of course, 268 of those reports, the top line there, are still pending. Now, a few of those have probably been completed now, but even a few months into it, we still had hundreds of reports that are still pending because these reports take time. This isn't just a form that we submit and like, you know, the developer writes the patch. We're interacting. Emails are going back and forth. A lot of time and commitment is put into making sure it gets reported and then you know disclosed appropriately and safely. Aside from those 268, down at the bottom, we can look at 144 reports. Now that's about oh, a little over 10% of the reports we just rejected outright. Like I mentioned before, the developers didn't wait, get, didn't have to waste their time with these reports. They were either inaccurate, invalid, or not meeting the criteria for what we consider a security bug. Well, minusing, you know, subtracting 268 and 144 leaves us with 748 valid security bugs in the WordPress ecosystem that were handled in uh, 2022. Of those valid security reports, 601 of them patch stack handled directly with the developers. That's 80% success rate. We are able to find the developer, contact them, communicate clearly and professionally about the security bug, and help them work towards the goal 
of writing the security bug patch, right? And then coordinate the disclosure time. So it's, you know, we're not letting sites know that they're insecure before the patch is available. A little worse was there was 148 cases that had to be escalated. Escalation typically means the project may have been abandoned, right? Like, so like we've sent an email to the site, uh, you know, the project owner and there was no response. Uh, it also sometimes means they were simply ignoring us, which is unfortunate, but about six, um, yes, 60 of those cases appear that we just didn't, couldn't find a way to contact the plugin owner or the theme owner, right? The developer responsible to write the patch or they were ignoring us. But after escalation, those 60 extra cases went back to being patched, which was great. It's just unfortunate we had to be somewhat of, I call it a burden on the already overburdened plugins review team. And then of course, 87. 87, unfortunately, of those escalated cases actually were ended up being abandoned projects. Nobody knew the project was abandoned until a security bug was identified and we had to get, you know, somebody had to get the, the developer's attention. Patch stack tried first, we escalated to the plugins review team or the proper marketplace, such as Invanto's security team, which we have direct contact with as well. And we talked to them saying, hey, this bug, this you know, plugin, it has a security issue. We haven't heard from the plugin developer at all in the last month or so. We're going to have to escalate to you. And then they escalated again. And even the, the extra review team, that extra step, uh, those moderators were unable to find a, you know, find a proper contact, or maybe the developer was unable to write the patch. And unfortunately, that led to these 87 plugins being closed in a, closed due to likely abandonment in 2022. Overall, not a bad number, right? That's less than 10% ended up being closed. And one of the problems though, like I mentioned, is just how do we contact these people? And that's one of the hardest things that we have an issue with, which is why in the last year, we launched the patch stack MVDP standing for, which stands for Managed Vulnerability Disclosure Program. We offer the servers, this service for free to all open source project developers because it solves multiple problems that we've encountered over the years. The developers get the benefit of patch stacks, WordPress security experts to validate and verify reports. So they don't have to deal with negative reports. The security researchers get the benefit of having a clear point of contact and get to join in with the Patch Stack Alliance if they would like, if they want to go on to earn bounties or get CVEs attributed to them, which is you know a proof of their knowledge and the research that they've done professionally, which is really good for a security researcher's resume. They also, security researchers, get to interact with our community of other open source security researchers, which is what I found to be a really positive community. Patch Stacks also gets a verified point of contact. We use this to save us a ton of time because now we know directly who to report and contact for security issues. So we got three wins right there. And I'm going to add a fourth one because site owners, if you're choosing a plugin and you see a plugin that, and you're comparing two plugins and one of them has a security bug bounty program or a vulnerability disclosure policy, you probably want to lean towards that one that has a vulnerability disclosure policy. I'm just going to slide this over here. Cadence WP has a responsible security disclosure policy. I'm just going to slide that right back out. So you can know that the Cadence program is very positive. In fact, all of the Stellar WP uh, programs, I think, uh, or, or brands have a security pro program. Oh, I think it's called the Liquid Web Bug Bounty Program. There it is family of rug. So they do a great job of taking security seriously. And that is a way you can prove it, not just say that you take security seriously. So next up, so on that, is what else to expect in 2023? I, I'm going <laughs> to, Kathy says, we can all blame her for the cadence security page. I think I like it. So I'll blame you in a positive way. But we can look ahead in 2023 is most likely there will be more security bugs patched. But what we've learned in the beginning, remember, severity matters. Most bugs that you see in a plugin aren't going to be. You know, there's an 80% chance of it's just going to be a medium, maybe a medium low security issue. If it's a CSRF issue, you can probably say, yeah, I will patch that when it's available, but I trust my users to not click silly links from attackers. So, you know, I've got a week or two to, to apply that patch. It's not an emergency. Of course, if you see you know a critical bug, like an unauthenticated file upload, then you're going to want to take some time that day, if not that hour, to make sure that a patch is applied as soon as possible. Again, like I mentioned, Patch Stack app really helps you basically get the, the information as quickly as possible to, uh, to basically know when your site are running an insecure or known vulnerable component, like a publicly information has been displayed. And something else you can do, if you do pay for the Patch Stack app, we give you virtual patching. Virtual patching is simply literally buying, you have to pay for it, but you're literally buying yourself time. You're buying yourself time to apply the 
proper security patch. In the meantime, you'll be protected by basically what's similar to a WAF. It's a rule that overrides your current plugin security code or, or per current plugin's functionality so that if you, an attack would not be successful against your site. So finally, let's recap real quick. We can expect the exponent, we've seen an exponential growth in security bugs over the last three years. Probably could expect some more. But remember that more bugs being reported means less vulnerabilities because the bugs are being patched. PyStack is here to help. All right, we're helping very clearly with developers and we're helping with partners that we have in the community to work with them to get the vulnerability intelligence that we are aware of integrated into their products so that they can use that intelligence to empower their users to apply the patches before they ever get hacked. So stay informed, don't panic. Be proactive, patch your plugins to secure your sites. Um, that's pretty much it. If you wanted to find more information, follow up about me or PatchStack, you can go to patchstack.com. We have, I have a weekly, mostly weekly uh, podcast where I talk about security topics. Sometimes it's topic of the week. Sometimes it's just a very broad topic. I try to keep them under 10 minutes and under a thousand words to make it really clear and concise about just an idea about security that perhaps the community needs to hear a little bit more about. Uh, otherwise, other than that, we have lots of articles about security topics, specific vulnerability issues. Uh, I've even written a short series about writing patches for unpatched and abandoned plugins because I just grabbed the abandoned plugin, I wrote the patch myself, and just shared with the world, hey, this is this is what it took. This is what it needed. It was typically sometimes just one or two functions added to the code base, and you'll find that the plugin is now secure and safe to use. You can also find PatchStack in our Facebook community. I think it's called PatchStack. And you can look for our security research community. If you so happen to be a security researcher, I'd love for you to come check out the PatchStack Alliance. If either of those things like Facebook or security research are to your liking, I hope to hear from you some more. And that is it. Thank you very much for everybody for listening. I got to write in 30 minutes. And so we have lots of time. I think we have a lot. Kathy can say if we have time for uh, Q&A. We've got time for Q&A, and we have time for just like you and me to talk security. Uh, all right. <laughs> you know me, Robert. I will talk security with anyone because I find it fascinating and exciting and important. Mm -hmm. um, it's so funny, though, because like when you're talking security with people, a lot of times it's it feels like you're talking insurance, and nobody wants to talk about insurance, right, mm -hmm. until... Like the guy's house down the street gets broken into. Then it's like, okay, tell me about your security system. Tell me about how to protect myself. Tell me about how to ensure to make sure that my my precious possessions are, are protected. Online security is kind of like the same thing. Nobody really wants to talk about it until there's threats. But the thing is, is like WordPress is kind of not to be scary or anything, but it's kind of like. It's the largest CMS on the web. And so there's a lot of like script kitties and just low level hackers that'll just write scripts and brute force, um, mm -hmm. try to get into sites. It, it, it attracts sort of, I guess, the widest net of, of malicious attackers. Maybe not quite so targeted of like, okay, I've got to go get into Sally's cat blog right now. But maybe I'll write a script and just see what I can get into, whether mm -hmm. it's for profit or fun. Um, can you speak to to sort of like just what kind of threats are out there um, that people should be aware of? Not afraid of, but aware of. All right. Well, like I mentioned, critical bugs. Those are the threat. I mentioned Reb Slider. That's 10 plus years old now. So I feel like it's like the, br the bridge is like yeah. done, right? Like yeah. it's all water under the bridge. I don't blame those developers. It's unfortunately what they did and now they implemented it. And it was it was an oversight on their behalf, but the, there was a complete disaster in, and that was again, I think that was a supply chain issue because it was like how many themes were using RevSlide. And right. all those themes have to update. Supply chain issue 10 years ago before it became such a common issue. Yeah. Those are the do you, ones. Do you, what was the what was the actual vulnerability? What was happening with that particular uh, plugin vulnerability? Do you remember? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's good to explain for those who don't know because I was working at DreamHost at the time, so I dealt with it firsthand. It's basically burned into my my existence. Yeah. Web slider. Again, no fault to the developers. Um, they did a good job in writing the plugin, but they also included a extra file. And that file was included so that they could do file uploads via the, I think it was a theme or maybe it was a plugin, but basically it was like, it was a file that the, an attacker could directly access because there's no authentication, no authorization, I should say, no authorization checks. Anybody could just access this file and upload a, a file. <laughs> like there was no checks to see, is this an image or not? It was just, ah, I can upload files. Why don't you go ahead and upload this PHP file? So that's a case where 
unauthenticated single request results in arbitrary file upload. And that is like what the, you could say attackers or malicious people really are looking for. Like that's the holy grail for them because they'll be able to automate this process using botnets. And those botnets are built on compromised WordPress websites and other websites, right? Compromised systems to then attack other compromised systems. And this is quite, this was literally my existence back, you know, 10 plus years ago when I was at DreamHost. It was like people emailing us, like we've got these compromised websites. So I'm going in and cleaning up those compromised websites. And then we're emailing other people saying, hey, you hacked our website. And then it's just another hosting provider. And it's like, nobody did this to each other. We're just all cleaning up the mess. Um, right. And uh, that would be a good example of like the worst case scenario. Luckily, it less than 2% uh, uh, vulnerabilities, maybe 90 or so last year, represented that sort of level of threat. And none of them had the installation count that, you know, looking back at RevSlider, RevSlider affected millions, I think, maybe hundreds of thousands easily of websites. So yeah, when you get that was, high install count, yeah. It was so easy to exploit too. And I think um, another recent one was... Um, the file manager vulnerability that, um, you know, the file manager plugin, very handy to have, but maybe not something you'd want to like leave on a site, but that like didn't even need to be activated. You could just have file manager installed and de mm -hmm. deactivated. But if you knew exactly what file to send a request to, yep. ta-da, you have yep. complete. And when you get that file upload, they're not uploading a picture, right? They're, they're uploading a malicious file, a backdoor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they're almost okay. always uploading a backdoor. And then they right. use that backdoor to upload more backdoors so they can hide their initial right. indicator, like point of compromise, and they start rotating out the backdoors. And then we can get into the whole thing. Like basically your web application then is not a safe environment. They could be modifying right. plugins that you have installed. They could even modify what you were using for security because right. of the plugin layer, like, like they can just simply attack that directly. Right. And And if you're not watching for it, a backdoor is something that if you don't have something, some kind of intrusion detection available on your site, you're not going to notice that backdoor. What you're going to notice are spam links or a malicious redirect to the bad side of the internet or you know, so, some other kind of indicator of a compromise that happens is going to be your first call that, that something is happening. But there's also going to probably be more than one backdoor on a mm -hmm. site. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Back 10 plus years ago, I was writing the tools that were identifying the indicators of compromise, finding the malware and doing all the cleanup uh, when I was at DreamHost. And I did that all in-house. And that was that was a lot of work. <laughs> and it was constant work because there yeah. was always a new backdoor. There's always a new modification to what they were using. Right. So you'd be updating your fingerprinting, like up updating yeah. your indicators of compromise and working to clean up the sites. Yeah. Right. Did you find cleaning up hacked sites fun? Mm, yeah, at first, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, like it's. I think my okay. biggest run was over a hundred thousand, and right. it was just like, wow, like I found this one indicator of compromise. And in the grander scope of thing, we're talking about multi millions of install, like a WordPress, uh, not WordPress website. This is any website, and we'd find hundreds of thousands of indicators of compromise across the network, the entire network, right? Scanning an mm -hmm. entire basically data center of hosted services to find tons of indicators of compromise. And it was so great. I I had one positive, great positive experience is that somebody actually wrote, um, I got thank you letters from site owners because this was provided at no cost at that. At that time, it was just, I, I was doing it as like, I've got extra time in my week, but on top of all my other duties, I can write these tools to start identifying, notifying customers and giving them, them the information they need to, to you know secure their site because they were already compromised. And yeah. it turned what was the wor what could have been the worst day in their life, right? Like if it's their business and their business is now linking to some inappropriate spam sites or having a bunch of junk links on it, it changed it because now it was the hosting provider noticed first, came to them and gave provided the guidance they needed to address the issue. A lot of it was, we were before I left, like we were doing like little notifications of like here was the insecure like yeah. plugin or theme you were running. So it was really useful. So that is good in that sense. But then, of course, it becomes a drag, I think, after doing yeah. it for multiple, multiple years. That's yeah. why I moved on and did some other stuff in the pure research realm. Yeah, cool. Yeah.
Very mm -hmm. cool. Okay. Well, I could geek out on <laughs> malware and all kinds, because I was cleaning yeah. sites too. Yeah. And I found it interesting because it's like, oh, I wonder what this one will be. And it was always like, you know, you never knew what kind of chocolate was in that box. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> so that, that feeling of that, why don't you, just excitement and joy when you find the back door where you're like, there yeah. it is. Like yeah. you edit it and you find it like in this little tiny snippet of code hidden. And it's like, this looked legitimate, but really it was like this like rearranged string it is quite fun uh, yeah so it's, it's, it's a game definitely was engaging yeah <laughs> so. definitely got my it definitely got my mind engaged it was like putting like what other people do with crossword puzzles I liked investigating mm -hmm. what hackers were up to so it was kind mm -hmm. of fun um let's get to some of the questions that we have first um Sander um said that this was a great presentation right. and Rob our good friend Rob Cairns said that we don't need to be scared, just informed and prepared. And that is very true. Don't need to be scared at yeah. all. Um, and then, um, oh, I skipped oh, one, I skipped but one. I'll get back to that. Um, Stanley Kubrick, right. um, alter ego, <laughs> uh, says in the view page source code section, is it possible to block out the fact that patch deck and other security modules are being used or is it um, public knowledge? Hmm. That's a weird one. Like it's not public knowledge, but you can always find out what a WordPress site's plugins are. You know, sure. WP scan has been a tool, right? That's not just a service. It's a tool. Right. And that was the first one that will scan through. And it's just a matter of iterating through your site's readme.txt files. And then you can play this game of cat and mouse. of so like, I don't want right. you to know I'm running WordPress. I don't want you to know. And I don't agree in the sense of, I don't want you to know what I'm doing. I agree more that openness, right? That I'll tell you what I'm running, Good luck getting in, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna because I'm gonna make sure I have all the patches applied. I'm gonna make sure I'm secure as I can be. I'm gonna make sure I chose a good sub open source supply chain, right? All the plugins I'm choose are well developed, right? They've got a security reporting process, right? Yeah. They, they, I know that they're gonna handle security for my sites. And when you look at it that way, you shouldn't be afraid of of displaying that you run uh, WordPress or that you run a specific tool. You don't yeah. hackers. Well, ha uh, uh, that's a good one. Stanley also follows up that he does not want hackers to know what tools. So I'm assuming tools, you mean like what you're running or what your stack is. Uh, hackers don't care. Because <laughs> hackers, I'm actually thinking majority, 99% are bots. And if we're mm -hmm. considering counting by traffic, it's 99.999999% bots. And they don't care what app you're running. They're just attempting an exploit. You probably, I haven't looked in the firewall rules, but I bet you I could probably find attempts against RevSlider, which is a 10 plus year old yeah. bull that are just being tried. The bots have been programmed to just attempt exploits against websites. So yeah. even if you hide the fact that you're running an insecure version of a plugin or a component, they're still going to try because remember, it just takes them one request for like those those their holy grail of weaponizations, right? One request results in a compromise. So they're just going to try. They're not going to make one or two or three requests to figure out what you're running. They're not going to make build a profile. They're not doing a tax surface management. That's more of an advanced threat thing, state level actors. And frankly, state level actors aren't, I mean, maybe they're going to go after your WordPress site, but they're probably <laughs> going to be more focused on other stuff, more advanced stuff. For the vast majority of attacks against especially WordPress. It's just going to be automated attacks that they're just going to attempt it. So even if you've done some sort of hiding, doesn't mean they're not going to try. Um, right. I even spent a while writing scanning software. And we specifically, we wrote tooling where like we can guess this is Linux. So we moved it over to a stack of attacks that we would just always attack against Linux. And it wasn't the fact that it was Linux. It was the fact that like, oh, you know, they're going to have a LAMP stack, right? They might be running Apache. So we're going to try Apache attacks. We didn't care if it was running on port 80 or not. You could run Apache or, or you know, like port 22 SSH port. And we would still try it because why not? We're just going to throw the kitchen sink at the application to see what sticks because that's easier than trying to profile. Right, right. Yeah, there's this whole, there's this whole idea that I think people get of like, if I could just, if they just can't see, if I, if I can make this obscure, if I could hide my login page, then the hackers won't be able to get in. But, but yeah. that's not always the case, is it? Yeah, I, I like hiding login pages, because it's sort of a second factor. But also, I hope you choose a good password. <laughs> like, that's the number one thing. <laughs> I, or a two factor, two factor authentication. Yeah, two factors. Nice. I've got a, I've got a fun story, quick story about that. I actually had a site get hacked because you know I'm, I'm human. Um, but this site had two factor authentication on it, and 
it was totally fine until the day, and this is actually kind of neat. I was running two-factor auth, and my admin user was admin. My password was password, and it never got hacked. I was using it to um, to as a honeypot. I was collecting all the passwords that were being attempted against my WordPress website. So I wasn't hiding the login page. Like You could attempt mm -hmm. WP login, and I was just collecting all of them. So I knew the list of the most attempted passwords against WordPress websites. And then one day, it got hacked. And luckily, I was actually hosted at DreamHost. And DreamHost, funny, I'm no longer working there. And they notified me, of all people, <laughs> like my old tools notified me that, oh, your site's hacked. You need to fix this. And I, and I was like, wow, like what happened? And when I investigated to find out what happened, the reason why they'd never been able to hack my password because you know admin, my username was admin, my password was password because I also had 2FA. Hmm. But what had happened was 2FA broke. My 2FA plugin accidentally broke. Something went wrong with it. Wow. And then within hours, right, obviously it was just an ad, uh, the first spot that came along that found admin password as my password completely hacked the site. And they, they ran a bunch of automated tools at that point in time, completely destroyed my website, right? Like it wasn't worth it for me to try to go in and like hand edit everything out. Plus this was just a honeypot website, so I didn't have anything there. So I just shut it down, restored from backup and fixed the fixed my two-factor auth plugin. Uh, yeah. But yeah, if you're using a plugin for... Uh, hiding your WordPress login, if that plugin breaks, then I hope that wasn't your only layer of security. Otherwise, you'll be in the same boat I was. Right. And I hope you didn't really care about that site because <laughs> it's going to get hacked. Right, right. Yeah, I, obviously, you know, making sure, making sure, first of all, that you have like something that's going to alert you that an intrusion happened. So intrusion detection, intrusion prevention, which would be like a firewall or something that would block mm -hmm. a lot of this, you know, background noise of the internet that are these automated attacks. Um, but being able to get informed and um, having a backup you know, a recent backup, not a backup from like three weeks ago, something that yep. I loved how DreamHost always did like eight hours. I'm like, oh, set it and forget it. I don't even need yeah. to think about it. That was always nice. So, yep. yeah. Okay. So we've got a couple more questions. I want to make sure we that missed we missed one too, right? Yeah. There's we've got one about, I'm saying the one about um, the paid patch stack ads, but I wanted to just talk right. about Cloudflare a little bit and how a lot of people think, oh, well, I just have Cloudflare. So now I'm safe. Is that true or not? Let me read. Right, so under the Cloudflare was a pinnacle of security. Apparently, this isn't the case. I'm not. Maybe. Um, can you clarify all security plugin choices versus Cloudflare? All right. Cloudflare is a different service than plugins. Plugins install at your application layer, uh, which is, and Cloudflare installs at your network layer. So Cloudflare provides primarily, and this is the best benefit of Cloudflare, it's a CDN, Content Distribution Network, I think, Content Delivery maybe. Um, they put your site kind of like a caching layer in front of your site, and they are the first person whenever somebody comes to your website, including bots and attackers, they're going to hit Cloudflare first. Cloudflare will serve them up cached responses, which reduces the load, increases the performance of your website, but also they're going to detect, because they've got a WAF and their layer, they're going to detect known bots, possibly detect known uh, bad reputation IPs and prevent them from accessing your site. Is it a golden ticket? No. Unfortunately, Cloudflare is not WordPress specific and they don't release a list of their rules, probably for obvious reasons, because if you, they gave out their list of the rules publicly, there'd just be bypasses for one of the biggest security CDNs out there. Uh, plugin choices are a little bit different. Plugin choices, and I'll use PatchTech as an example. PatchTech runs at the app layer, so we take advantage of that. We are aware of things that only the application, WordPress itself, is aware of, like which plugins you have installed. Plug Cloudflare doesn't know that. Cloudflare will have to write a WAF rule for every Word fan or WordPress uh, security vulnerability and apply that to all websites equally. Pastech is aware of what's, what plugins you are installed and if you are installing a known insecure version. So we will only install the, uh, the security, like virtual patching, for just the services that you may be insecure for. Also, we provide that dashboard. We can tell you what, you're in, what versions of software you have installed so you can be empowered to take action on your self. Cloudflare simply doesn't provide that. What Cloudflare does is good, but there's no one golden ticket. Use them together, put the pieces together in the right way, and you're going to build a really strong layers of security. Amazing. Okay, cool. I just want to highlight this really quickly about the use of keys like YubiKey as a 2FA mm -hmm. pass keys. Can I just yeah. say pass keys out yeah. loud? I'm, <laughs> I'm giving a talk at WordCamp Phoenix next week about pass keys. Pass keys is like the most exciting thing that I see for not just WordPress, but for 
all of our sites, all of the sites that we are doing business with, our banking accounts, everything. Um, this is using crypt public key cryptography. Um, watch my talk next week, or you can go on YouTube. I've got a video about pass keys. I'm that excited about it. So um, authenticate passwords are just broken. Can we just say <laughs> passwords, passwords are bad? Yeah, are they just passwords broken? are good. Please use your password, but also, yeah, there are better solutions. I'll say that. Yes, there are. YubiKey. 2FA are great examples, but I'll make a quick note on YubiKey. YubiKey to set it up requires a um, a third party server, right? Not a third party server, but a third server to that actually does the validation. And it's hard to run that on your WordPress app itself. I don't think you can do the validation from within a WordPress because then now you're just stacking too much into the application layer. Having a having a separate server that does the authorization to confirm that that YubiKey's one time password is accurate for that that login is what makes you be key powerful, but the fact that it needs that extra server makes it harder to set up and implement. Uh, yeah. uh, pass keys don't, I don't think pass keys do. You know more about pass keys than I do, but. Enough to be dangerous and excited <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so, dangerously yeah, excited, all right. Dangerously excited. Yeah, no, um, I theme security, uh, I worked with, um, with that team and Timothy, one of the developers over there, the lead developer for I theme security came to, um, came to the whole stellar management and talked about pass keys last year. And I was like, Oh, I know this stuff. This is like how PGP works. And this is how mm -hmm. Bitcoin works. And this is like, I know this stuff. I felt like the little girl in the Jurassic park of like being able to like get into Linux and save everybody from dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm saving pass keys will save us from the dinosaurs of passwords. So mm -hmm. it's coming. Um, NordPass, I think just added that to, um, they have a pass key management tool now in the password manager. So this is like really hot, really new um, emerging way of us to authenticate. And on that note, I'll shut up about it. And I want to give you the floor to really talk about what um, the paid patch stack app adds for people who are using it. All right. Yeah. Also, I'm going to do a quick answer. Like, I am a big fan of YubiKeys. I have multiple. So, yeah. Which is also one of the other things. You should have multiple YubiKeys because if you lose the one, then you got a right. bigger problem. Right. Um, so the paid patch stack plan, right? If you wish to, to pay us, number one, you support us. And I just like, I think that's a good enough reason in itself. But uh, the, what you'll get is what I mentioned. You'll get that virtual patching, which provides you the time you need, right? If a, let's do a story, right? Like, if, a, if you're running the patch stack plugin on your websites, multiple, let's say you've got 20, 30, 100, 500 websites that so you're in a big agency and you've got, you've got all these components installed and you need to track every version. So the free version will tell you that there's a you know, known insecurity in, in one of those sites. Now the action, the onus is on you to take action. You need to go in and apply that patch. The paid version of patch stack is what provides you big and like I said, it buys you time, literally. It allows you, we will implement for the critical bugs, like those big important issues, there will be a, uh, uh, you know, you get the notification, but you also have a virtual patch, which means your sites can't get compromised in the meantime, right? It provides you a layer, immediate layer of protection. So then you can go into your website or on your own convenience and provide and, you know, perform the update. I do know enough uh, like uh, site owners, they don't like doing updates sometimes because sometimes they hit a, a blocking change, right? Like that update broke, right? 3.3 .3 to 3.4 was a breaking change, but then 3.6 came out and three, and you know, you've been on 3.3, but 3.6 was a security update. That was a serious issue. Now, if you move from 3.3 to 3.6, it's a breaking change. You need to spend time to fix the issue. Um, and, you know, it needed something that needed more time. That's why they didn't provide that update. That's why they didn't turn on auto many users and website owners don't turn on automatic updates because they're afraid of the breaking change concerns. Right. So this is that buying you that little thing for that very niche uh, market where like, yeah, like I can't be bothered to drop everything I'm doing today to go click update on a website and then fix everything because it breaks like some some cascade of components that were being used um, yeah. or you're afraid of that. So it really, like I said, it buys you that time to be able to say, okay, I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to set aside two hours, you know, maybe four hours to, to really work on why this site couldn't get updated or needs to be updated and moved. Right, it is right. The biggest value, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I see so much value in that in that virtual patching because when I run, run updates, just because of my experience with WordPress and other things, I want it to be an attended update. I want to stay stay and watch that. I want to test it on staging, mm -hmm. make sure it works. I want to do it on production and 
I don't want any downtime. So to have mm -hmm. that feature is is amazing. We've got another question about patch stack adding any overhead to site performance. That's a great question. Performance is one of our biggest concerns. Um, yeah. We know security bu uh, security plugins that exist out there, especially the ones that are doing malware scanning and things like that. It's a huge performance like time suck, right? Like it's it's simply a lot. There's a lot of processes and a lot of time and a lot of resources. Uh, Patch Tech app is intentionally designed to be performant, right? We, we, we focus on the one thing that we do really well, and we're not trying to say we are all encompassing thing, right? You need to upgrade to this service and upsell you on this service and that service and, you know, install sub apps. It's just Patch Tech app. We're going to provide you the notification based on our intelligence about secure, known security vulnerabilities. We're not going to slow down your website. We're going to be as performant as we can. And there is actually, I think there's a YouTuber out there who did a test against most of the, or at least four or five of the security plugins. I don't know what the outcome was. I just know we won. Um, <laughs> we were the most performant option of the, of the things. Again, it comes at, you know, uh, I don't want to say compromise, but it's like, remember what the focus is. Build the stack as you need to provide the right security features. Try not to throw everything at the kitchen sink, or everything including the kitchen sink at your website for security. You, you don't want to install five or 10 security plugins, right? You're going to end up in this performance problem. And we know site owners care about performance. It's so hard. I dealt with this when I was working at, I think it was at Pagely, where site owners, those are some high, high end customers. And we're building out highly performant websites. And we have to tell them it's this one plugin that you chose that just is a monolith of data resource consumption, like uh, for us to support this one thing. And then you might even find out, oh, I was just, I was just using that giant plugin for this one feature. I'm like, well, why don't you install this very specific feature? And you know, and you're going to reduce your resource usage overall. And that's those sorts of solutions are were great. That's great. Yeah, so important. So that's really good to know. I wanted to just also ask as we're wrapping up here, mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about, you know, iThemes is sort of a sister brand to Cadence and, uh, you know, my friends are over there. Can we talk a little bit about um, the services that Patch Stack is providing to help iThemes customers? iThemes, the plugin, is on well over a million sites, a million people, happy users. And now you guys are, are fueling a lot of the data mm -hmm. that is helping people make good decisions about their site security. Can you talk a little bit about what you're providing? Mm -hmm. A lot of it is the similar stuff that we provide in our free version of our plugin. What you get is that vulnerability intelligence, the knowledge that, okay, this component has a security issue. You need to work on it. Uh, I have to add, we're still in talks about a lot of stuff. There's still a lot more to come related to iThemes and Patch Deck. I, I don't, I actually don't even know where we're at, where I, so I don't want to say the wrong thing. I'm more to it's come. over there. It's a different, I know, I know different it is. hallway. There, there is a great, um, yeah, there's, a, there's a great article that was posted on iThemes websites, iThemes blog, um, that explains the bait, the, our initial integration and our partnership with us. Um, and the whole, well, the whole liquid web brands we've talked, right. Patch Tech yeah. has talked to you about security bugs. We've worked with you professionally. I, I think I was helping you off like a couple of weeks ago, just like, Hey, here's this thing and that thing. And you know, you all, everybody here listening, you'll find out more about that in a few weeks, <laughs> but we've just been, you know, working because again, how we approach this whole thing is through cooperation. We think cooperation yes. will and helping each other out is the way to go forward with security in this industry. Um, we're not here to just take up all the pie and let sites get hacked. We're like, no, we're going to try to help people never get hacked in the first place. And this involves working with partners like iThemes. Amazing. And that is something that is really important to me and why I asked you to come here to oh, talk to you. all of the Cadence audiences because we share the same philosophy mm -hmm. of open source is about community and it's about uplifting everyone in the community community up uplifting and amplifying the voices of everybody who uses wordpress and helping everyone stay safe be successful and to sort of stake their digital domain and 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 have a voice and mm -hmm. because you guys have that same philosophy and that commitment to community it just felt like just the perfect the perfect fit yeah. so with that we're right. friends. This yeah, is what we obviously. do. Friends, we're making, <laughs> we're making, and friends, we're making the open source web more secure. Right? Exactly. I think Great. everybody has heard somebody say WordPress is insecure, and like, let's just prove every one of those naysayers wrong. It can be secure. It does take a little effort, but it can be it, secure. It's more secure than it was when we were cleaning hack sites, isn't it? <laughs> it is true. So many, but yeah, so many. But we came back. So many C panels with thirty sites in it. Yeah. <laughs>
we are both coming back. I think it was over a decade experience each. I'm not sure how long, but we've been here doing this for a long time. We're still here. Yeah. We're still fighting and we're finding the real solutions. It's not just yes. the cleanup. It's getting in front of the cleanups. It's, it's working with the developers. I love working with the developers. I say it's 90% of the developers. I love working with them. Uh, 10% don't answer my emails. <laughs> Unfortunately, they end up re- they end up becoming abandoned and, and such. But even then, I, I enjoy kind of working. Like I said, I, I do a, the blog series I do is called Last Patch. And I write patches for unpatched security bugs. And I just do it for fun. And in one case, I actually helped a retired plugin developer who yeah. was releasing his open source plugin. And he's like, I don't have time for this. And I said, you know what, man, I'm going to help you out. Here's the patch. It was like eight lines of code. I patched not only the bug that was reported, a couple others that I spotted. And I updated his change log to look nice. And I did give myself a little credit in his uh, in his uh, in the credits section. So now I'm officially a plugin author for the in the WordPress plugins repository. Amazing. That's so cool. That's so cool. I I appreciate your friendship so much. And I appreciate the commitment you have to WordPress, to the community, to to everybody who's building something with WordPress and with Cadence. Got to throw that in there too. So this is just an amazing opportunity to talk about all of this stuff. I know security is boring, but until it's not, and then it's fun and interesting and exciting, just like my doorbell going off. Yes. Don't they know I'm live streaming here? Okay. <laughs> We're gonna have to deal. All right. Well, I am gonna I'm gonna say goodbye to you, Robert. For Thank now, you. we'll talk again Thank soon. You. Thank you yes. so much for being here. Everybody give Robert mad props. Go follow him on social media and follow yeah. Patch Stack on social media as yep. well. We're gonna say goodbye and I'm gonna do my little transition. 